they'll always act like it's another game, right? I mean, my college coach, I remember 800 for Coach Meyer. Um, I was lucky enough to be around Kirk Fredrickson at Northern State, too, when Kirk Fredrickson got 800. Um, so I've, I've seen some guys get 800. And what you, what you appreciate about it, and I get, a, I get a front row seat, right? So I get to sit back in the offices, I get to sit back in the corner, and I get to hear the daily process of, of KB and his staff over and over again. And what they have is they have a well-oiled machine, right? And that's what you want when you're, when you're going for 800. When you're winning as many games as they have over a period of time, it's just like clockwork. I mean, they just know what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, why they're going to do it. They have, all the, they have all the things ironed out that they need to be successful. And I think what people don't really realize is how hard it is to sustain those little micro processes that go into winning every single day. Not only you as a staff, then having that staff stability, but also the players that come in and the way that it's, it's, it's portrayed down from, from their leadership from the top down, from their seniors to their juniors to their sophomores to their freshmen, just what it is to be a Green Bay Phoenix, I mean, for the women's basketball program. And so for Kevin to go for 800, um, I know, I know he'll sit there and say it's just another game, but at the end of the day, I mean, that's a milestone that very few get to, get to achieve. And that is a testament to greatness over a long period of time, which you don't see nowadays. You don't see that sustainability over a long period of time anymore. Um, in this day and age, like I said, it, those guys are dinosaurs, and we should, we should sit there and actually, like, we should marvel in, in what it is because I'm not sure you'll, you'll see that many more times in this, in this coming era. One, it, it's, it's self-awareness, too. I think Kevin Borset, Coach Borset, has a high level of self-awareness. He knows who he is and who he is not. I mean, he was at Michigan. He came back to Green Bay because why would you mess with happy? Don't mess with happy is something he says all the time. And I 100% I agree with that. If you're happy and you're winning, I mean, those two things kind of go hand in hand, right? Like a lot of times you're winning and you're happy. But if you're happy and you're winning because you love where you live, you love what you do outside of this, your family's great, uh, you live in a great area, you can fish, you can hunt, you can do golf, you can do the things that you like to do on top of playing and winning basketball games and teaching quality young women. I mean, why would you want to mess with that? And uh, he, he's, shown you, he's shown you the blueprint for, for what it means to not mess with happy. Speaking of that, you're happy right now with the way your team is playing? <laughs> I mean, I'm extremely happy with our guys. Um, I said, I'm never, never going to be, you know, I always say I'm easy to please and hard to satisfy. Um, you're never going to be happy being four and four, right? But at the end of the day, what we're looking for is growth. We're looking for these small, like, like one of my favorite movies is What About Bob, right? What About Bob? Baby steps. Dr. Marvin, Dr. Leo Marvin, you know, he's, sitting there, he's like, I'm doing the work, but I'm doing the work, you know baby steps and he can barely open a doorknob you know because he's freaking out all the time but hypochondriac but at the end of the day he opens that first door you know and he steps out into the world and like he's doing the work and our guys are doing the work so it's baby steps for our program and it's a great teacher's movie if anybody wants to become a teacher you should watch you know uh, what about bob and just see what it's like see what the process is actually like game one and now i would probably say just on the offensive end as far as shot making um you know, we started off the season just not being, you know, we were getting the right shots. It's one thing we do chart in our processes is the type of shots we're getting. So anybody can shoot the basketball. You can shoot a lot of different shots, but we want paint touch rotation threes. We want restricted arc shots. We want low paint twos, not high paint twos. We want paint touch threes, rotation threes, not non-paint threes. Um, and so we are getting the right shots early. They just weren't going in. And so I think it's just one, getting comfortable with each other, understanding where our shots are coming from, how they're, how, how they're getting throughout the flow in the offense, um, a little bit more continuity later in the clock to help us with some movement, uh, to maybe free up our guys, working better with flipping our angles of screens, uh, and then playing off the downhill drives, penetration, and pitches. So I would just say probably the thing that I'm most excited about is just our growth on the offensive side. Our defense has been pretty constant for the most part. Um, we've rebounded well, we've defended well. Uh, now it's, it's just having that, that ability to, to eliminate mistakes from turning the basketball over. Uh, and a lot of them you can look at it or unforced turnovers uh, that we could just do a better job of being sure with our decisions. You know, one of our guiding principles is belief, right? Big Ted Lasso guy over here, he, yeah, everybody knows it. Like, you gotta, you gotta believe. And belief is, is something that I always tell them, culture doesn't take four years, culture takes belief. So how fast can you believe in what you're doing? And I think part of believing in what you're doing is, is one, you measure it so you can see it. Uh, you can't just tell guys to believe in something. Look, there's a ferry over there. Hey. They're, they're real, they're real, you know, and all of a sudden they're like over there, there's no ferry over there, right? There's no pixie dust, right? So what are we, what are we talking about? That's not belief. Uh, but you have to actually like see some tangible results. Uh, proof of concept is a big deal, right? So you can believe all you want to in what we're trying to do in the summer before we play anybody. Uh, then we go scrimmage North Dakota in a closed door scrimmage. Then you play St. Norbert's and every time you play and every time you see a little bit more proof of concept, I think it deepens your resolve. I'm not saying that they didn't believe before we started playing games, but at the end of the day, you still have to see what we're talking about work. You have to see the proof of concept. 
Uh, and so getting some early success and having a little bit of victories and uh, even in your losses, seeing some of that growth and sticking to that, I think that helps deepen the resolve, right? Rudy's our spirit animal. Rudy, Rudy. Yeah, I mean, you know, crap, you can do the chant. Like, he's our spirit animal, and he's the type of guy that he matches my passion. I mean, you'll see him on the defensive end of the floor when, when we need to get a stop. He is screaming at the top of his lungs, let's get a stop, clapping the floor like a Steve Wojciechowski type moment, you know? Like, that's the type of guy that you got to have. And that, I think the fans and the crowd resonate with that. They see that. They see this young man, like, have this spirit, this energy about him. Like, he means so much to him to be a Phoenix that, like, you, you can't not get behind that. I mean, I, crap, I get behind that. I want to get in the stance on the sidelines sometimes when I see him down in that stance because I love that crap. I love when somebody actually outwardly shows that emotion and expression for, like, we need something right now. And he doesn't practice all the time. Do it in 144 shooting. We're not making enough shots. We're not running fast enough. He'll be the guy that steps up and speaks. So he's our spirit animal. He's our emotional leader. Um, and every team's got to have one of those. If you can have a couple of those, you're blessed. Uh, but to him, like, when he's healthy and when he's a full go, when he's at a full 100, uh, he's a different player. And I thought I thought we saw a little bit of that swagger come out uh, against Milwaukee. Hit some shots early, hit some tough ones, had that little freaking George Gervin <laughs> scoop shot. You can recruit a lot of things, but I know this. If a kid doesn't have any want to about him, he ain't going to do it. If he doesn't want to do it, he ain't going to do it. And I think want to, I remember this from talking to Jerry Kill when I was at Northern Illinois. I would go sat in his office out there, and I asked Jerry Kill what he recruited. I was a young, you know, assistant, 26, 27 years old. And I asked Jerry, Jerry had some success in Southern Illinois. He goes up to NIU. I said, what, what do you, what do you, what do you recruit? He goes, well, Sundance, I, I recruit speed, skill, and want to. Speed and skill are fine, but if a player don't want to do it, he ain't going to do it. And I, I just, it stuck with me forever that the want to in a player means a lot. It's not the skill of the man that's important, it's the will of the man. Because at the ultimate, at the end of the day, if the man has a, a strong willpower about him, a strong resolve about him, he'll get the skill. He'll figure that crap out. It's the want to do things. And I think CC, the first time I ever met him, he was sitting up at the women's game. I told this story before, by himself, watching the women play in the uh, uh, in NIT. And he was, you know, here's, here's a guy coming off a 3-29 and season out supporting the women's program. We sat and talked for about two hours in the office. I knew right then that kid was a good kid, high character, and wanted to be here. Ryan Wade, I mean, Ryan Wade's story was he, he wasn't even going to be a scholarship player for us, but he just kept showing up every single day, not asking, not want, not not expecting a scholarship, but just doing the work every single day. And then Amari, you know, Amari, we had to do we had to do a lot of work with Amari when we first got here. He's probably he's probably the player that has come the furthest in this program since we got the job. I mean, if you talk about where Amari was about nine months ago, it's it's phenomenal where he is now. I couldn't have told you that he would have been that he'd be right where he is right now. Uh, and so Amari is, is a story that should be told because his, his want to is, is deepened on a level that's you know exponential for where I thought he would be and where he actually is now. And so those three guys just show me that they, they wanted they wanted to be here more than anything else. I'm probably more like a act first, think later type of guy. So at the end of the day, like uh, I'm gonna trust my gut when it comes to a lot of things. I think you do this stuff long enough that you you, you end up finding out what's inside of each human being. To me, that's way more important. You'll hear me talk about this in the hiring process and even when it comes to recruiting players. You recruit the person, you know, not the position. We hire the person, not the position. And the person is right, the position will work out. Uh, you've got a person who has, like I said, a high level of resilience and resolve and willpower and grit and determination and all those things you talk about. Ultimately, the skill will come because they worked their butt off to get it or the, the traits they need to have to become a great assistant will come as well because they're working their butt off to figure it out. Uh, you want, you want those people that don't want to let people down. I mean, it's, you know, say what you want about me, I'm a, I'm a people pleaser, man. I, I, I want people, to, I want people to, to know that we're here for them. I want to help them out any way I can. I'll give as much as I possibly can till the day I, till the day I die. But my motto is empty the tank. So when I'm done, just understand, when, I, when, I, when I'm no longer on this, on this God green earth, my tank will be empty. I will not be moving. You'll ask, what's wrong with him? He's gone. All right, he's gone. That tank is empty. Their connectivity uh, and their ability to solve problems figure things out, that's their strength. Their strength is that they're connected. Their strength is that we've had a lot of adversity early in the season, uh, and so they've figured some things out on their own, and we haven't still had a steady rotation, you know, right now eight games in where it's like who's playing or who's coming off the bench. It's what's needed in the moment. Uh, it's what we feel as a staff that we need to be able to have a chance to best win this next game, and that's all we're focusing on is can we, what, what can we do to win the next game? When you start thinking too many games ahead and you start out thinking yourself and out coaching yourself. Kind of like the Packers right now. We're six and six. You know, crap, we fought our way out of the out of the doldrums and what can we do to win the next game? Because at the end of the day, right now they're in a playoff one. 
And so all they got to worry about is winning the next game. What can we do to win the next game? And that's what our guys' strength is. Resiliency, resolve, uh, having some adversity assists, figuring out on the fly, and then a high level of connectivity. Uh, boys over there on night that pitched in, they got me a Wicks jersey. It's kind of cool to get a jersey where you don't have to like, like makeshift your name on the back. There's actually, and he had a good game last night. Went out there, caught a couple of good passes, man. Like, uh, just I don't know. We might be related somewhere down the ancestry line. I don't know where it's at. You know, you look at one of those little little trees or whatever they do, and send send a sample of your saliva in. Crap, we may be cousins somewhere. I don't know, but uh, I'm pretty pumped about the jersey to be honest with you. That was my first Packers game live. You know what I like about Packer fans is the level of respect they have for their opponent. Like there's not, there's not, there's not like there's other stadiums where people are going and fighting all the time. The Packer fans have a level of respect for the game and the respect for their opponent, but yet they can still go out there and be really, really loud and boo the crap out of somebody and make sure that they screw up on a snap count or something like that. The Packer fans are they're they're deep and they, I mean, there's everybody's out there in snow pants last night. I think there's four or five layers out there and they're still sold out or sold out Lambo. I mean, unbelievable environment, unbelievable environment. I'm just happy to be a part of that. That was fun, man. That was fun.